32 Vintage Stereo Collectors and Restorers. I'm doing a little thing today called the Capacitor Conundrum. And I had somebody ask me very recently, they said, well, I don't, they're, they're working on their own restoration. It was actually a Pioneer Integrated Amp, uh, SA5200, I believe. Um, they said, if you were going to only replace one or two capacitors, which would it be, which has the most effect? And I said, well, the main filter. That always helps. But really, if, the, if it's, everything's working okay, you could continue to use it. Lots of people do. There's a whole school of thought on that. Um, and sometimes you cause more trouble. You stir things up when you start taking something apart. But in the case of this one, I actually, if I was going to only replace one, it would be the main filter. If I was only going to replace two, it would be the two coupling capacitors for the speakers. And that's where this one is really sagging. Uh, the original is a 25 volt thousand microfarad and I'm actually using a 2200 microfarad. I didn't have axial caps like the original so I used a couple of radios which had long enough leads to tuck in there nicely. Um, Here's how I could tell. I wasn't checking it with a meter or anything, although you can do that. Um, a lot of people desolder stuff, check with a meter. Oh, it looks great on the meter. They put it back together. They end up something that's a little bit mediocre. To me, it was more about the sound. I've worked on enough of this series. I put an input into it and listen to it for five minutes and go, that's kind of thin or that's noisy. This case it was kind of thin. There was a definite roll off in the bass. Didn't matter what source, it had nothing to do with the loudness switch or anything like that, tone controls. It was these caps. As soon as I replaced them, I went from thin to rich. It's like, you know, going to one restaurant going, yeah, this food's okay, it's a little bit black though, no flavor. Then you go to another place, you go, this is the best lasagna I've ever had in my life. That's kind of the difference. Why did I go to 2200? Well, these originals, these Elnas always test higher. I'll just show you what I mean. So this one's coming in. It's over 1400 microfarads. It's almost a 2200 anyway. And it charged right up, no problem. Not showing any faults. If there's faults, you'd see them over here and reverse charge it yeah like it's actually no problem with that one let's see what the 2200 comes in at that oh, went off the scale next range it's almost it's almost 2700 and I put in a 3300 that's actually pretty amazing hit it this way a ah, little slow climbing. I'm just looking for it. They usually will charge and show the same reading either way, even though it's electrolytic. Um, years ago, this was the only thing I used to actually check capacitors was a multimeter. When I took electronics in high school, the first time I took it, they had a whole bag of capacitors and you, you had to test them and see which you thought were good. It's just one of those things they asked you to do. So I'm just, here's how I used to test them. So right now it's being charged. See that? There's charging there. You couldn't really tell if it was near capacity, but you could see if there's a short you see this one here? It's about 1K in one direction. That's interesting. It shouldn't be. Yeah. It's not as short. And you would think, well, it would pass more signal if it had, you know, some leakage. Not always the case. It usually just sounds awful. Um, I don't put as much stock into test equipment as I used to. And my original capacitance tester, it's just in a cabinet behind me. Um, it was a Heathkit tube one with the tuning eye. I forget the model number. That would tell you if a cap was good. 
and sometimes it blew them up because it passed, it actually put it into a circuit and if you had the voltage control up fairly high, let's say like you're using like a 16 volt cap, it was never designed to test a 16 or 25 volt electrolytic. You'd put the leads on it like this and, and the tuning eye would close up a bit and you go, oh okay, so that's showing, you kind of had to guess by the tuning eye, yeah, that one's actually not too bad. Bang! <laughs> it would blow up. I had a cup blow in my hand. Because it's testing it, it was meant to test caps and tube gear. Here's an interesting thing. This is one I was just using for testing another project. 1000 microfarad. And then actually a lot of the newer ones are much closer to the value they're supposed to be. So that's 9700 or 970 microfarads. Let's just reverse it. Yeah. It's actually right on value. The older ones are, are higher. All I can say is, oh, it's just the enterprise calling. Um, I actually rely less than the test equipment. I listen to my ears. You know, like, <laughs> listen with my ears. And that's how I... I end up changing things. I noticed a couple things when I tested this one. First, the controls are noisy. Okay, you spray them. You don't take them out and test their values. Second thing, sound was very thin. Okay, well, it's probably those actually. It usually is. Because um, they're under a lot of stress. There's, there's like power supply voltage on one side, about 24 volts, and then it's blocking all the DC and letting enough current through to drive the speakers, those take a beating. Over here in the power supply, I've replaced those, the 2200 with a 3363 volt. So up the voltage from 50 to 63. This is just a 1000 for 1000, and then a 250 for the 220. It's the only axial I had, and this actually powers the um, phono section and the tone control section. So you go from about, what is it, 42 volts, down about 22, down to 19. And actually the power supply itself, the main power supply, didn't sound too bad. It was pretty quiet. You see what I did right there. Looks kind of neat that way, the bias pots. It was pretty quiet and everything, but I thought, well, I'm going to do a really nice restoration. I have a person interested in this that, I, that is really likes good audio. And so I wouldn't turn it back without a recap. And it will improve. The only thing I can see now that really, it's actually not bad the way it is. The phono sounds like garbage. And they almost always do. This board right here. Oh, C458 transistors again. That's why it sounds lousy. Well, we can fix that. We take that one out, we might as well do the tone control board. There'll be two on there. You see where I'm going with this? <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, that's the capacitor conundrum. Really, if you're going to unsolder something and you have a replacement, change it. You know, if, you, if you're into it for the long haul, listing on the long haul, and trying to make this sound better than it may have sounded when it was new, that's what you got to do. Thanks for watching and listening.